I definitely do what I do because I am fascinated with people. I love getting to know people and I love um, trying to break down their barriers and understand what makes them tick. Um, they're like Rubik's Cubes and, and your job is to try and get out of them what they're really like. Sport was one of the first things that brought me out of my shell and one of the first things I think that I could feel quite confident in in that space, whether it be rugby, football at school or netball or hockey or any of those things, I think because you know what your position is meant to be within that realm, you kind of know what your job is and you know what your purpose is. So I think sport gave me a lot of confidence outside of that realm, if that makes sense. Whether I liked it or not, my brothers were both really sporty. My mum was a, a rugby coach. My dad played cricket. So I think it came naturally to our family. Whenever we go to my dad's house, it was always sport on the telly, sport with my brothers, that kind of thing, out in the garden playing football in the, in the backyard. It was apparent from quite young that it just kind of ran in our family. So it was just something that we did. We've always been that sort of sporty family together. I remember wanting to be a press packer for Newsround and I remember sending in a letter to Newsround and being convinced I was like right I'm going to get picked and I never got picked and I must have sent about five applications in never once got picked for anything I'm, I really loved writing when I was younger that was like one of my outlets I loved English at school I loved creative writing um, so the two really were running parallel to each other but I hadn't figured out the crossover yet School was a little bit of a challenge in that I had my favourite subjects, I loved English, um, I loved PE and then other than that my mind would um, travel distances that they, it shouldn't. I was, I was quite naughty actually and I did get a fair share of detentions. Um, I was lucky my English teacher was really good with me and she was the one that kind of like pulled me in, got me to focus. Um, I remember being really terrible for the mock exams for your GCSEs and my mum was like, look, do you want these grades? Because they're the grades that you're going to get, you're, you're going to fail. I had to just get through school and then once I was through it, that's when you know, I can go and have the freedom and, and follow what I really want to do. But yes, yeah, school and me weren't really that, um, weren't that in tune with each other. Considering what I do now, which is all about, you know, getting that attention, holding that attention and engaging people, I think it was it was probably always in me. I think that kind of the you know, going on the charm offensive, which is essentially what I used to do, held me in good stead for my career, but not necessarily my school life. <laughs> My mum was by far my, my biggest influence in my life. She was the one that was the rugby coach. Um, she was kind of like the head of the family and she used to like take us anywhere and we'd all just do whatever she wanted. She was the only female coach there but it never held her back and she was brilliant at it and her team were actually the best team in the whole club. I think she kind of instilled like a, like a fearless attitude, especially in the world that I work in. Like I never really felt overwhelmed or the fact that it's very dominated by males. It's changing really quickly and it's becoming a very different environment, but it was never an alien environment to me and I think that's because it was never, I was never made to feel like that when she was in a male dominated environment. My English teacher, Mrs. Burrell, she was, she was like a blessing and a, and a curse really because everything that she was trying to do for me, I hated it at the time. And because she was so engaging with me in my English classes, um, she gave me the right education and she kind of was the one that, that kept me on the straight and narrow. If she wasn't there, I don't think I would have done half as well as I did at school. So every mistake I've made, I've always survived it and I've always come through it and that's always at the back of my mind that it may be painful at the time and it may be embarrassing or it may just break your confidence a little bit. You do always get over it and then you'll never mistake, make that mistake again. Nerves do really weird things to you, especially when you've got like a, a camera in your face and you're trying to act really normal. Your nerves take over and sometimes you say things that you would never say. That all comes with confidence so the more mistakes you make the more you realize it's not the end of the world and then you loosen up a little bit because you're not as scared to make those mistakes all you can do is prepare yourself to walk into that arena and as long as you're as prepared as you can be the rest of it is all about confidence Gabby Logan was always the first one that I remember looking up to and I don't think I looked up to her because she was a female. She was just there because she had this great personality, she was so professional, her delivery was excellent and she always looked really comfortable and she did it with an air of um, calm about herself. And I think our job especially is all about confidence. All you can do is prepare yourself to walk into that arena and as long as you're as prepared as you can be, the rest of it is all about confidence.
Everyone is so welcoming. The pundits that I work with, I always say Gary Neville is, is my favourite because he has a way of doing things that is very Gary. So he's found his own personality and he's brought that to the screen. You know, it can be um, a challenge when you're facing trolls on social media and that kind of thing, but I'm growing a thicker skin to it and I'm realising that that's not the audience that you really need to be taking any advice from. You hear sportsmen saying this, don't get over hyped when you have a win and don't get over sad when you have a loss because ultimately if you take too much to heart it really messes with your own emotions. It is very male dominated or it was when I, when I walked into that particular company. They want the diversity, you know, if you can't always have the same experiences if you're all from one specific group. So the more diverse it is, the, the better it is and the more audience that we appeal to. So now, you know, it's, it's the best job in the world, apart from the fact that your alarm goes off at four. You're working with these wonderful people and you're talking about sport. There's, there's no downside to it.